Get ready, because today we're going to talk about scenes and 10 of the biggest mistakes people make while writing them. By the way, my name is Brandon McNulty. I'm the author of Bad Parts, also the author of Entry Wounds, and welcome to my writing channel. Scenes are the building blocks of a story. And if you want to write a great story, you need to string together a bunch of great scenes. So we'll focus on this today, and specifically, I'm going to look at 10 of the biggest mistakes that writers make when it comes to scenes. I'll explain what they are, why they hurt your writing, and how you can avoid them. Mistake number one is that the scene is poorly structured. If you've ever written a scene that felt like it was all over the place, or it lacked focus, or the arrangement of events was just off, it's probably because you didn't understand scene structure. And this is something I've talked about on the channel before, and there are two main types of scenes. Now relax, because they're easy to understand. Each has only three steps to it. The first type of scene is an action scene, and then you'll also have a reaction scene. But let's start with that action scene. An action scene follows the pattern of goal conflict disaster. It's a goal-oriented scene. The character has a goal. They want something. Then they face conflict. They face obstacles that prevent them from getting that goal. And then finally the scene ends in disaster. Something goes wrong that makes the story continue in a new direction. Now one thing I want to point out here is that sometimes you might have goal conflict resolution. Resolution would be a more positive outcome for the scene. But most of the time you want to end it in disaster because that keeps the story interesting and it pushes it in a new direction where the characters have to react to that disaster. And that brings us to our reaction scenes. Reaction scenes follow the pattern of reaction, dilemma, decision. Character has an emotional reaction, usually to that disaster or that resolution in the prior scene. Character has an emotional reaction, then they face a dilemma. What do we do next? What has to happen now? What can we do? And usually there's going to be two or more bad options here. And then eventually they're going to make a decision. And once they make that decision, then you're going to move on to another action scene because they're going to have a goal based on that decision. We have to do this now. Goal, conflict, disaster. Then you have reaction, dilemma, decision. Mistake number two is lack of conflict. I just talked about conflict, especially in that goal, conflict, disaster setup. So you know there has to be conflict in a goal scene. But be aware, there should also be conflict in those reaction scenes, especially during that dilemma phase. If a character is facing a dilemma, there's going to be internal conflict. So make sure that they're weighing their options, they're struggling to make a choice, and then eventually they have to make that brutal decision. Mistake number three, no shift in scene values. And scene values are a great tool for keeping your scenes in line, and it's something that's discussed in Robert McKee's book, Story. This is my favorite guide on the craft of writing. If you haven't read it yet, I'll link to it in the description below. But what McKee talks about in this book is the idea idea of scene values. And these are things that should change over the course of the scene. They should change from negative to positive or positive to negative. Now let me give you an example. Let's say we have a character who is wandering through the desert and they're thirsty. They're going to die. So survival would be the value at stake here. And it would be at a negative point at the beginning of this scene because they're wandering through the desert. They don't have water. They need to get water. And then we'll say over the course of the scene, they find water. That would end on a positive scene value. So survival would go from negative to positive. Now here's another example. We'll say your hero is on a date with someone they admire. The value here would be companionship, and at the start it would be positive because the date is going well. But then maybe the hero says something that upsets that special someone, and the person storms off. Then companionship will go from positive to negative. So always make sure that at least one value in a scene changes. And if nothing changes, the scene either needs to be cut or rewritten. Because if nothing changes, what's the point of the scene? Mistake number four, no emotion. And if you can't identify the emotion at the heart of your scene, you're in trouble. Ask yourself questions like, what are the characters feeling? What should the audience be feeling? What emotion defines this scene? Is it something like suspense or mystery? Is it something like dread or fear? Is it something like joy or excitement? There are a lot of possibilities. You can run the entire emotional spectrum, but be aware of what emotion defines your scene. Mistake number five, no emotional shift. Remember those scene values we just talked about? Positive to negative, negative to positive. When those things happen, it should change the emotional feel of your scene. So if a character is wandering through the desert, they're thirsty, they can't find water, and then they find that water, you're going to have a shift from desperation to relief. So remember, the emotions your characters feel should change over the course of the scene, and the audience should experience that change as well. Mistake number six is weak or confusing scene transitions. And I've talked about scene transitions on the channel before. I'll link it up here as well as in the description below. But 
But what you need to know about this is when you jump from one scene to another, it's important most of the time to reorient your audience. And by this I mean you need to signal who is the POV character in the new scene. Where is this new scene taking place? What time of day is it? Those important details, you need to get them out there. And if you don't, the audience can be completely confused as to what's going on. It could throw them off and take them out of the story. So make sure, okay, figure out who is the point of view character? What do they want? It's often great to signal what they want, what they're going after, what they're trying to accomplish in this new scene. And then also bring us up to speed on the where and when. What time of day is it? Where are we now located? Has there been a change in location or time? These things are important to get across to your audience. Mistake number seven, you start your scene too early or you end your scene too late. And a scene is like a party. And when people show up way too early or they linger for long after it's over, things can get awkward. So you want to start your scene as late as possible and you want to end your scene as early as possible. And one thing to keep in mind when starting your scene, don't overdo it with setting description. Remember, you can describe your setting throughout the scene. You don't need to dump it all at once. And then one thing to keep in mind with ending your scene, try to end it on an emotional punch or with a cliffhanger. Mistake number eight is too many characters. And if you have too many people in a particular scene, it can make the scene feel bloated or unfocused, especially if you have characters just sitting around doing nothing. Every character in a particular scene should have a purpose. They shouldn't be just existing or taking up space. And if they are, try to find a way to rewrite that scene where the characters are not in it. Or try to find a way to just get them involved. Have them engage in the conversation or have them interact with the, with the setting. Whatever it is, find a way to make sure every character serves a purpose in a scene. Mistake number nine is wandering dialogue. And this drives me nuts. I see it with a lot of newer writers. They'll have characters talking back and forth, back and forth back and forth without pushing the scene forward in any way. So if you see your characters having a conversation that's not really going anywhere and it's just going on for page after page after page, think about cutting it down, think about focusing it, make sure that every conversation in your story serves a meaningful purpose and it's not just filling the page. And then finally, mistake number 10 is poor scene placement. And sometimes the positioning of a scene can be a problem. And this especially happens in regards to tone. Sometimes you have a scenario in your story where a character dies and it's this tragic death and it just guts the audience. And then if you follow it up with a scene that is just goofy and offbeat and silly, that can cause a problem. Now, Keep in mind, that goofy offbeat scene might be perfectly written, but the positioning is the problem. So be aware of that. Another thing to be aware of, if we go back to those, to those two types of scenes, the action scenes and the reaction scenes, if you have too many action scenes in a row, action, 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 without a reaction along the way, it can really wear down your audience. So make sure you have moments throughout the story where the characters stop and they face a dilemma and they have to think about what they do next. So I hope this helps. Question of the day, which of these 10 mistakes do you need to work on the most? Let us know in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel, please pick up a copy of either one of my books and be sure to leave reviews on Amazon. Bad Parts is great if you like small town horror. It's about people trading away their sick and injured body parts in order to get healthy again. And then Entry Wounds is great if you like thrillers. It's about a guy who picks up a haunted gun and he can't put it down till he kills six people with it. Also be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out my other videos. And as always, remember to keep on writing.